If I was solving this one algebraically, I would probably, since the 4x's line up, I'd probably subtract those two, use elimination, 4x minus 4x is 0. Negative 2 minus a negative y would be negative y, and negative 2 minus a negative 11 will be y, 9, so I'll get y is equal to negative 9. Plug that back in and solve, so maybe I'll use the second equation here, 4x minus negative 9 equals negative 11. 4x equals negative 20, so x is equal to negative 5. So our current algebraic methods for solving these equations work just fine. They actually might even be more efficient than having to solve them with matrices. But what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to solve this with matrices. So what we do is we write all the coefficients as a matrix. We write our variables as a column matrix, and we often call that column matrix just x. And then our answers are constants as a matrix b. So this equation we write as ax equals b. Notice that if you multiply it a times x, that would cause you to take this row and multiply it by that column. Can you see that you would get 4x minus 2y? And it would equal negative 2, which is your first equation. And the second one would be 4x minus y equals negative 11. So you get this equation that's ax equals b. And you can solve this equation if A has an inverse. In other words, you can quickly see if there's a solution to this by finding the determinant. So in this way, it might be faster than our other methods to find out if there is a solution, because you can quickly see what the determinant is. Then to solve for x, you need to get rid of A. Now this is where you have to be thinking matrices and not equations. Because if this was an equation, you would want to probably divide both sides by A. But there's no dividing in matrices. So that doesn't work. The only thing you have in matrices is multiplying by the inverse. And if you multiply by the inverse, this part right here is going to equal the identity matrix. And the identity matrix times anything keeps it's like multiplying by 1. The key thing to notice, and we noticed this before, that matrices, it matters the order that you multiply by. A times B is not the same as B times A. So in order to get rid of this A, we multiply by A inverse in front of it. Because we couldn't multiply by A inverse at the back, because then their A and our A inverse wouldn't be together. If we multiply in front on this side, we must multiply in front on that side. So if you put A inverse in the front of your equation on one side, you're going to have to put A inverse in the front of the equation on the other side. And using that, you're going to get your matrix all by yourself and be able to say what x and y are. So here's the same equation. Now we're going to set this up with our matrices. So we've got 4, negative 2, 4, negative 1 as our coefficients. x, y as our variables. Negative 2, negative 11 as our answer. Over top, if I name these a, x, and b, we now have to find the inverse of a. So a inverse will be 1 over the determinant. If we look here at our determinant, this is negative 4. This is negative 8. Negative 4 minus a negative 8 is positive 4. So we've got 1 over 4. Switch these two. 
and change those to negative, and we have our inverse. Now that we have our inverse, if we have our equation, which is ax equals b, and we multiply this one in front by a inverse, then we have to multiply this one in front by a inverse, and we will get x is equal to a inverse b, which if we write out, yeah, I can go back up. Is that enough? And B was negative 2, negative 11? Yes. Again, this is where I really like to keep that fraction out in front and deal with that at the end. Now, if we multiply these together, first of all, this is a 2 by 2, and this is a 2 by 1. We notice that our numbers in the middle are the same, so we can multiply these, and our answer will be a 2 by 1. To find our first answer, we'll take row 1 and multiply it by column 1, add those together, so we'll get 2 plus negative 22 will be negative 20. And for the second one, if we multiply column 2 by row 1, we're going to get 8 minus 44, which will be minus 36. So now you can multiply that 1 quarter through. And we get the same answers that we got from elimination. And at this point, you would probably say, Yes, elimination is quite a bit simpler than this, but this gives us an idea of how to use matrices to solve the same thing. Now, when you get to your 3 by 3, and you're allowed to use your calculator to find your inverse, then all of a sudden, it's a lot simpler than having to solve it by hand. Right. Here we go. So there's the matrix set up. The inverse. And then there's your answers. X is 1, Y is negative 1. put up the answer for this one as well. So first you'd have to multiply both sides by 4 and rearrange that equation a little bit so that you can get set up your coefficients matrix with the negative 3 and the 4 in there. And then solving for x and y, you'll get 5 and negative 4. Again, for this one, probably the easiest solution would be using the substitution method, but if you wanted to use matrices, this is how you'd have to set it up. So you've got some homework questions there that I handed out. You can work on those for the, till the end of class.